Hello dear ones, it's Alice. Look at my sunbeam here. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, so last night we what we had was um, the KP index, the planetary KP index went up to 5. And uh, right after that happened, I could sense all over my local area, a lot of people had suddenly become attuned to the um, to changes in the mental field that happen during those times when the KP index is is kind of high or uh, when there's a solar flare or when a, a coronal mass ejection hits Earth about two and a half days later. Of course, not all solar flares result in coronal mass ejections that hit Earth. Well, I should say that, that reach the field of Earth, not hit Earth. Uh, some do. Mostly when you see the picture that of the of the um, solar flare, uh, the sun and the solar flare, and the solar flare appears flare appears to be on the right hand side of the sun in the picture. That's when it's more likely to um, to find a footprint to Earth, as I understand it. So, but anyway, so all that really happened was there was a real strong stream of solar wind last night, and that caused the KP index to go up to five. And just at that time, or soon thereafter. I felt a real strong um, change in my mental field. It was, uh, it was basically, I became very spacey, and it be and I could f sense vast changes happening around the area of my head. And uh, it, not only that, but uh, I was concerned about the people that I heard uh, clairaudiently, who all seemed to be experiencing various um, degrees of, um, y you know. Uh, mental anomaly <laughs> and and a little bit of, and as a result I think emotional uh, like unusual emotional feelings uh, so I had to go out but very soon I was back home again and so then I just I just relaxed and just listened to what was going on right and um, uh, and, and that, that uh, what um, Tom Kenyon calls, uh, I think, mental chaos or cognitive dissonance, that's it, uh, continued for a long time last night. And uh, this morning, hold on just a minute. Look at the beautiful green grass on the hillside over here. Isn't that beautiful? So some folks needed to go by, so I had to stop for a minute. Uh, so I just want to tell you about this morning. Uh, I was talking clairaudiently to the people around that had been uh, on my wavelength last night. Of course, it keeps changing from, from group to group and from individual to individual. But as it turned out, this morning about some of the same people were on my wavelength. So I asked them how it had been for them, how it had seemed for them last night. And uh, one of them... Uh, the first thing that I felt uh, was that the first person I talked to and many, many other people last night had risen to a state of awareness where they n now noticed the activity of solar flares. And that's good because they're getting their, their downloads of, of light language and information that will see them through these times with aplomb and help them uh, go steadily forward into the new, into the new age, into new Earth. That's wonderful news, actually. And so, all over Earth, I sense that this happened last night. An amazing, um, an awakening, an amazing wave of, of awakening that happened. So, to get back to my first uh, person that I talked to, it was a mom, a mom, and um, she had a young family. And lately, she's been um, seeing, she's been very clairvoyant. She's been seeing all kinds of interesting things. And uh, what she saw that concerned her was, she said, space aliens. <laughs> and I remember she was pretty upset about it at the time. I remember her husband was helping her to be more calm and like that, which is a very good thing when family can help each other. And this morning, she and I were talking about it, and and I was explaining that that one of the things that's happening 
as these solar downloads come is that the fabric of space and time as we know it uh, we're becoming more uh, we're becoming more uh, perceptive of of more things in that fabric and so and in the dimensions we're becoming able to see the different dimensions and hear the different dimensions whereas before we were stuck in one dimension 3D physical earth and now what she saw is in another dimension beings in another dimension but because it was so uh, such a, a shock to her to do that she, her emotional reaction was somewhat fearful well so this today I'm thinking why not imagine that that maybe what happened was she slipped through from physical earth or uh, 3d or 4d into a 5d dimension where there were these sorts of beings and she might have actually given them quite a start so so maybe that's really what happened I and mean, rather than them frightening her so much maybe maybe they she frightened them or maybe the mutual there was a mutual reaction because uh, I can only imagine what it might be for um, beings that have never seen us to suddenly see us you know so that's one possibility there to look at the other point of view then um, I spoke with another mother hold on just a minute so I spoke with another young mother this was this morning who's um, uh, who was very concerned for her baby last night she suddenly thought, felt, she suddenly perceived and felt that her baby had stopped breathing. And there was nothing I could do about it because I was undergoing my own download. In any way, physically, I didn't know where she was at that time. So at that time, I just last night, I just said a little prayer for her that all should be well. And this morning, as it turned out, everything was fine. Um, but the thing that had happened to her last night, apparently, was that she herself had moved for a few minutes into the fifth dimension. In the fifth dimension, I've read, um, our perception of time is, is much slower. So um, we can experience, what I should say is, we can experience quite a bit more in five minutes than a person in 3D could. So I thought this over about how she thought that her baby had stopped breathing last night and I think what happened for her was that her sense of time was, was altered uh, and uh, slow-mo uh, kind of sense of time took place so that though the baby continued to breathe in the normal way for three-dimensional Earth her perception was, because time slowed down for her, her perception was that the baby wasn't breathing. So I think in circumstances like that, where we suspect that something has gone wrong uh, during a solar download, the thing to do is just trust. It's a very uh, great benefit to be able to have faith in God, or in our higher self, or in creation or source or the universe during times like these when our perceptions uh, are not functioning normally so so if we can just hold on to that faith and keep our hearts open and trust then no matter what our perceptions sense no matter what our minds and emotions tell us we can see ourselves and our families through these these situations and it will be all right for everyone so hang in there y'all you all are doing wonderfully well and it was an immense step forward for humankind last night well done very good work god bless everyone so i have one Check out my starburst effect. Wow! <laughs> I have one other story that I thought to tell you with regard to experiences last night. Um, when the mind doesn't work right, 
when the emotions are just going, uh, taking up the slack, <laughs> and when uh, the perceptions like what we see and hear uh, and feel may not match anything that we've ever felt or known before. Um, the thing that, that helps me is uh, remembering some training that I had years ago uh, in the Hindu religion. Uh, what I learned back then was that there are actually Indian holy men who spend their whole lives chanting God's name either out loud or under their breath or in their minds, they chant God's name. And the reason they do this is that they've learned that if they can chant God's name at the moment of passing on, at the moment of their death, then they will achieve liberation. That's their thought. And so, I'm not a practicing Hindu, I'm a practicing Christian these days, but I still think their idea holds some merit of always praising God, and then at the moment when these kinds of things happen, we can, we can begin to feel some confidence in God, no matter what, you know? And the, the acid test, I think, is just as the Hindus used to say, what would we do at the moment when we thought we were passing on? At the moment of death, could we actually um, have faith in the, that God will, will, God's love will see us through that transition and on to something greater? That's a wonderful notion that God will see us through. And when we think about it, God sees everybody through through that very transition of change to a different dimension, a completely different dimension, the fourth dimension, the astral plane, the realm of heaven and hell. So God takes care of all of us, and God will continue to take care of all of us, no matter what dimension, what timeline, what um, perception we may have of what is going on. God is everywhere. God is in all of these, and God will, will be with us no matter what. That's what I always come down to, faith, and love, and hope. <laughs> so, so, you can look forward to the fact that we're not going to be passing on, most likely. We're probably just going to be experiencing uh, what a great songwriter once called, everything new. <laughs> so, talk to y'all later.